Welcome to the guide to doing e-marketing as a practical exercise. Now, across the course of this semester, I'm going to interchangeably use the term practical and practice. Traditionally, a practice exam is an exam you would do that didn't count for anything. Whereas in this subject, we've got a little bit of a language thing I need you to be mindful of is the course is split between theory and practice. So if I talk about practice exercises and practice assessment tasks, I mean that in terms of go out and do something as opposed to this is just a drill. So with that possible bug in mind, let's go have a look at the practical stream. So first and foremost, one of the things that I want you to be mindful of and thinking about when you're making a decision here is that there is a theory stream and the theory stream is three essays and the practical stream is a lot more use the internet to do things. You will be required to do stuff beyond the classroom. It won't just be about the three hours in the room a week, it will be about maintaining and operating a social media presence during the course of the semester. So that doesn't appeal to you. If this idea of investing time outside of the classroom doesn't appeal, so that this is an ongoing living project that runs for 13 to 15 weeks that you need to engage with on a daily or at least you know, every two to three days basis. If that's something that doesn't appeal, don't do this path. This path is not easier than the theory side. It's also not harder than the, than the theory side. It's just a different approach. It requires a different time budget, but we talk about that and we schedule for that. So if the practice path doesn't appeal to you, don't take it don't take it on the belief that somehow it's going to be easier than writing three essays. Or, and in particular, don't skip this path because you think three essays will be easier. Do the one you think will suit you best. Once you commit to this though, what you need to do is get your game on and get your game on early. You are going to have three tasks to be completed across the course of the semester. The thing to understand is that assessment submission two and assessment submission three are not yet visible on Wattle. And that's because they don't trigger and they don't come to life until the previous assessment task has been submitted and marked. So when you submit a set of assignment one and you get your marks and your feedback back, assignment two will open. Now, the questions are available for all the assignments in this presentation, in this PowerPoint deck, in this video. But you can't submit them until you've had a chance to receive and review feedback from the previous assessment task. The other thing to understand is that when you submit to the practical exercise, that will unlock the next two practical exercises. It will also then lock down the theory so you can't see the, the theory assignment submission. Once, you pay it, once you've chosen your path, you've chosen your path. Now, this is going to have some rough edges to it. This is a project that is a living in project. It's a baby internship, if you like. You are running an actual live internet based Using an Instagram account, you're on Instagram. You are using Instagram. Same for if you're having a Twitter account or you're having a blog, you're in the real world. So there's some rough edges because it's going to be real world data, real world experiences. Things work, things fail. That's the point of the exercise is that you are taking these rough edges, you are applying theory, planning and intention up front. And then you're coming back and reporting what happened, how well did intention match reality, how well did theory match practice at the back end. But what I, you, I want you to understand is that you're not going to be on your own on this. You are back, you've got 
the backup and support from myself directly as your lecturer and your backup person, and also from the university. So you're not on this on your own. Yeah, it's the internet, and that comes with its um, pros and cons, but we're not leaving you out to dry if something goes wrong. We've got your back. Of course, if you do something stupid and you do something wrong, we also have your back, but we'll be basically grabbing it and throwing you to the, the walls as deserved if you do something stupid. So don't do something stupid. All right, let's talk to your assessment task. You've got a 30-40-30 split. Now, you have more, more moving parts and subcomponents than the essay. In the first assessment task, this is where you are going to set out what you're doing for the semester. This is the plan, the game plan. It's also the one where I am quite happy to work quite closely with you for getting your in tutorial, in lecture, in one-on-one -on -one consultation, online email. I'll work with you if you want that support to build your plan, to get your platform together and work out what it is you want to do. So, it's a 2000 word assignment in here, a written paper. You're going to need to use theory, you're going to need to use marketing, and you're going to explain to me what it is you want to do with the platform you want to use, the audience you want to address, and what your outcomes look like. So you need to be able to articulate to me what you want to do, why you want to do it, what your frameworks you're going to use are, and you want to need to be able to do this in about three weeks. So you're going to want to hit the ground running. Second part is that you're going to give me a timeline. You're going to give me a set of dates because I am going to ask you in this first assessment task to map it down to the submission date of assignment three and tell me what you're going to do and what you expect to achieve between zero, start of this course, and conclusion the last assignment. Now these milestones and metrics and an approximate time budget, these are important. These are going to help you get some realism to your goals. These are going to help you also look at your timetable and go, what do I need to set aside to make it happen? Third part of the assessment task is basically going to be a template document that will be up on the site, which is a registration form. It quite simply is telling me who you are, so it's be your name, your student number, and the address of the sites you're going to be using this semester. So one of the things about this is that I want this to be an opportunity for community. That if we've got 20 or 30 people using Instagram and you all follow each other, then you've got a starting point for building up your momentum. You've got all the people who are working on Instagram work, follow each other, great starting point. I will also want to be able to look at what you're doing in terms of how your social media presences are evolving and developing. So the registration document is there for me to be able to look at what you're doing so I can help you along the way. So details on the plan, here's your subcomponents. Purpose, intention, strategy, content approach. Tell me about your audience. Who do you want? Have some idea who you're pitching to. It's so much easier to write content when you know who the audience is. Give me an outcome, and the outcome's got to be on the smart objective agenda. It's got to be able to be measured. Your outcomes need to be able to be converted to metrics. And it's a marketing essay. Tell me, like, you've studied marketing. This is a chance to say, hey, I want to do, I want to set a new social media account up and grow it over 13 weeks to an intended audience using this marketing strategy. That's 2,000 words. Content approach. There are three ways you can build content. We're going to talk about this a lot in the class, but I want you to be telling me about these three approaches. One is going to be your primary. 
you're either a creator, a curator, or a communicator. One of these is your primary purpose. You have to pick one. One is your secondary purpose, and one is the incidental may also occur. So if you're going to make new stuff, 50% on create. If you're going to then make new stuff so you talk to people about the new stuff you make, 30% goes on communicate. And the curation, then it's 20%, it's spare. But basically, you've got to pick your priority because that's also going to help you when you're looking at your goals, your strategy, your tactics. If you know how you're coming about this, it's going to make it a lot easier to look back and say, in 13 to 15 weeks' time, did I do this? If you set out to be the curator, you're going to go and share interesting content you find from around the internet, and the next thing you know, you're creating original memes and you're writing uh, text on photos on a weekly basis. You're not a curator. You didn't do your 50% of curation. You did creation. So you can do a pivot. You can, make a, you can make a change. But if you don't know what it was you're planning on doing, you don't have an answer to that question. So you don't know if you're doing it well. So the timeline, I want this timeline to be from second week of semester, what you are doing and have done. By the time you submit this assignment, there should be a couple of marks of what you have done, things that you have already achieved. I want it to map out to the end of semester. What are you going to do? I want to know what your milestones are. And when I talk more about this in class to actually sort of break these down, come up with good ideas, I want you to be able to tell me what your measurements are. So your milestone might be 50 followers. What's your metric? Your milestone is 50 followers by uh, week eight. Your metric is, how many followers do I have? I also want you to be thinking about time budgets. How many minutes, how many hours, what sort of investment do you need to make to make this work? And those milestones and metrics got to match your plan document. So, tech specs. Essay or report style, probably report would work for you easier. Any referencing format, so long as it works. It's an ANU assessment, it's an ANU assignment. Theory is still going to be required. Theory also makes your life so much easier. That's why I require it. The planning doc is about 2,000 words, the plus minus 10%. Believe me when I say if you're under, you haven't thought this through enough, and if you're over, you need to go back and look at your specifications because if you're writing more than 2,000 words, you don't have a clear enough view of what it is you want to achieve or you're stretching for too big a goal. So you have the tech specs. You get one primary presence. That is what we're going to assess you around. So you either have a Twitter account or an Instagram account or a WordPress blog as your primary means by which you're going to achieve your goal and document your goal. All the metrics, all the measurements, all the assessment tasks that follow will use the primary presence. The secondary account is still available for you to use. You can do any sort of supporting mechanism you want, but it won't count your metrics, it won't be what you write your assignment on. It will support your primary presence, but You've got to pick one. I want you to know if you're Twitter stream, Instagram stream, or blogging stream. So, your expectations for this thing. This one's got, it's got to be grounded. It's got to be real. You've got to be able to point to the theory, point to the practice, and understand whatever you set out to do is what you are going to do assessments two and three on. Now, assessment two comes with a little footnote escape clause of if it goes wrong we can fix it going wrong at assessment two but whatever you set up here is your semester so you want to sink some good thought in those first three weeks it's fast it's furious and it's binding so the other thing is we got a lot of comms channels i want to talk to you i want you to be willing to talk to me about your projects i want this to be a much more open and engaged. If you're doing this purely online, if you're doing it in the Clayton's class, we've got a lot of comms channels through Waddle. There's email, there's the internet, there's ways to talk to me. 
just work with me on this one because I can make it easier for you by working with you. I've done this a lot in practice. So that's your first. Your second task is your midpoint review. It's 40%. So unlike how reality works, the critical point for you here is not the end of the project, it's the middle of the project. So, first thing I want you to be clear about is that I am not going to grade you on your primary presence. I'm not going to go and look at your Twitter account and give it a score out of 10, or your Instagram account and give it a score out of 100, or your blog and give it a score out of 20. That's not the purpose. You need that primary presence to provide you with the data and the information to be able to write this assignment. So the internet presence, uh, for its technical term, it's formative. It's a learning. Uh, it's a learning task. It is what also is a skill set. It's giving you practice, but where you get the points is you get the points in the assignment, but the assignment is based on your experience of using the internet. So if you don't do, if you don't maintain your blog, if you don't run your Twitter account, and you don't use your Instagram account, when you hit this 40% assignment, you can't fake it. You can't suddenly try and get yourself out of, like, oh no, I haven't used this, I better in the next four hours go do a bunch of things on the internet and write the assignment. So you want to be making things, you want to be using that account. So the first thing is, the reason why you can't fake it in zero minutes is I'm going to ask you to do a video. It will be for 10%. It is an overview of the project. It is three minutes for which you get plus or minus three seconds. And I'm serious. If you are at two minutes 56, If you are at three minutes and four, you want to go back and fix it. That's what, how blunt I'm going to be about that. It's 10%, so I can just uh, discard those marks in a heartbeat without worrying about it if you breach the timing limit. What I expect the video to do is I want you to look over what you've done, explain what your project is, your primary presence, what it is, what it does, and what you've been doing for the project to date. And that's why you want to have content there. The other thing I'd like you to do with the midpoint review is I'd like you to talk about in writing some up to either five pages or two and a half thousand words if you want to use diagrams. What have you done with this system? That's use marketing theory. How are you tracking towards your goals? What do you want to do in terms of, can you meet the timelines? Have you met the timelines? Can you meet the timelines going forward? How is your project going? It's a critique of your performance. Um, how is the theory sticking against the practice? How is it working? You also have to make a call at this point to say, can my original timeline get me home? Can it get me over the horizon? If it can't, you are to submit a new timeline. If it can, you are to submit the original timeline again. So we've got a pivot point. You can say, I'm going for it. I can do this, I'm going for it. Or you can say, I need to make a change. Here is my change. Obviously, one of the critical things here is that if you plan on pivoting, talk to me, okay? Let me, if you plan on going ahead, also talk to me. It might be a good time to get some advice. Tech specs, you, for the midpoint review, must give me an essay, usual deal. If you're going the five pages, it's five pages. You go to a sixth page, oof, awkward. Five pages, not including references. You must include the following. You've got to tell me how are you progressing. You've got to tell me what goals were achieved. You've got to tell me what was not achieved. You've got to give me a statement of whether you're going to pivot, you're going to change path, or you're going to continue and then give me a timeline, give me the timeline to close out. Show me what's been done, show me what's left to do. And I want you to understand is that if you're having a bad run, this is your rescue point. 
This is your point where for 40 points, you can turn around and say, well, nothing worked the way I expected it to, therefore, here's what I'm going to do differently. Or, things have been a catastrophic success. I expected to have 30 followers. I have 4,000 people following me. What, do I, what happened? Here's what I think happened. What do I do now? So critical success and critical failure are also factors we'll talk about. Uh, timelines, I trust you. I've got no reason not to. So you will be accountable to yourself and to your timelines. A disaster, if it goes horribly wrong and you can explain it, that's worth as much as a nice crisis free with no explanation. In fact, it's probably worth more. You can change your timeline. Now you've operated to that timeline for five to six weeks. If you find that you've set yourself unreasonable tasks, you're a hard taskmaster on yourself, you're not happy with what your progress, whatever, you can change your goals, you can change your game plan. I expect you to be honest, and basically your grades here are about how you account for your progress, not about what your progress looked like. You could be running one of the most popular, suddenly the breakaway most popular YouTube channel to come out of Canberra in forever, but if you can't explain why it's working, you're not gonna get a good grade just because your YouTube channel's successful. You're gonna get a poor grade because you can't explain what you're doing. Same way, if you've got, your plan was to go out and get 50 followers and you've only got five and you can explain why it didn't work, you're gonna do better than someone who got a thousand. It's not about how you're performing, it's about how you're critiquing, analyzing, and understanding what's going on with what you're doing. So, to make it easier on yourself, in that first document, that first assessment task, you set out a plan, stick to it. Create the content you promised you'd make, use your marketing theory, keep your notes. You'll notice in the Waddle course, there are a whole bunch of things in terms of links like 10 top tips for using Instagram or 100 ways you can blog, they count as use of theory and practice. Keep a note of when you go off to one of those sites and you try one of their ideas, add that to your write-up, add that to your thing of, well, we tried using the following advice. If it worked, if it didn't work, that's the sort of thing I want you to be mindful of, tracking what are you doing, how are you trialing, what, are you, what experiments are you doing, Keep those notes together, and that's going to make this assignment a lot easier to write up and to explain. Also, if you can make it to the class, this is where I want to be workshopping a bunch of these things. I want to be doing practice runs and training drills and basically making stuff. I want to use those three hours productively for things getting done. If you can't make the class, but you can make an online forum or you, can, you want to uh, advice online, connect to me, Twitter, email. All right, so the last thing I want to say to this assignment is you're going to need to use theory and practice, but you can. It's easy. I mean, quite seriously, if you can tell me that you were blogging twice a week to hot topical topics because you'd read on a um, how to make a great blog website and you can show me the URL to that site, that's citation of practice. It will be that easy. So it's doable. You just got to do it. So the last thing, essay topic three, the final, the end game. This is the wrap up. This is basically where you look back over the semester and you have created yourself enough data to be able to answer this, to go and say, what happened? Did you meet the goals? What was the theory and practice in use? And how well did it reflect? So you need to talk a little bit about plans and the planning process. Because you have done a plan, but at this point in the semester, you will have completed a plan's implementation. You've written a plan, you've implemented it. So plans to the planning process, what's more important. There's a lot of stuff you can talk about here. This really is the wrap up of what happened. What's the theory that explains what happened over the course of the semester? Text specs, uh, any format goes, 2,000 words. At this point, you might what you want to be clear on is that you are not documenting what you did as much as you're explaining why what happened reflected the marketing theory you thought that you used or reflected an explanation of what you thought should have happened.
much more diagnostics. There are three parts to the question. To what extent did you meet the goals and expectations? What was the marketing theory that helped you get there or didn't help you get there? What was the theory you thought would work which failed? How well did the decisions you made in that planning process at the top end of the semester reflect the reality of actually getting the job done? So a little bit of discussion about plans, planning processes and metrics against the delivery of your real, real world practical things you did for 15 weeks project and that gives you something to work with. So again, you've got timeline, you've got context. You have also got a lot of personal data here. You've got a lot of personal information of your experience, which you want to be able to explain your case study, your personal case study against theory. And that basically wraps up the, uh, the practice side. If you this will be what will be mostly worked on in the classroom. So if you need stuff, you need advice, show up in that two, two or three hour window, talk to me, contact me on the internet, but don't basically feel you're on your own, don't feel you're isolated. The game plan here is make a thing, make it happen, make, rea make something that's an idea, turn into reality, tell me about the processes you used along the way. Success or failure in making the project work will give you a story to tell. And the assessment is about telling that story from a marketer's perspective of what worked and why it worked, what failed, and why you think it failed. 